Uh, now, I know there was one special event at the church that I remember while you were here, and that was your wedding. Oh, yeah! yeah. So please, tell us yes, about that. I'm happy to. Um, my husband and I, my, my husband Matthew Gaventa and I were set up on a blind date by um, Dora Savage and Sue Raup, where they, Sue Raup's son um, has developmental de delays or disabilities, and he lives in a community called Innisfree, um, and my husband-to-be, uh, husband now, at the time was a volunteer at Innisfree, and so he lived across the street from Chris Raup, and, but they were all together at some family fellowship event, family fun day event at Innisfree, and um, Doris uh, saw Matt and thought, well, he looked like a nice young man and knew that I was single. And so, uh, and he at the time was looking for a job. He was looking for work. He was volunteering. He had left, um, he had finished a master's, decided not to pursue his doctorate in film and sort of come back to Virginia as a transition time, trying to figure out what was next. And so he was more outgoing than usual because um, he thought Doris might be well-connected in town and could find him a job. <laughs> and so instead, the next day or a couple of days later, she called him up and asked if um, he was seeing anyone. And he was like, <laughs> a little old for me, lady, but all right. Um, he, was, he, he was dating someone at the time, and so he didn't, we didn't connect at that point. That was in the fall of 05. Um, and then in January, like January 6th or 7th of 06, I got a call from Doris that said she'd heard from Sue through someone else that Matt had broken up with his girlfriend. And so she had <laughs> called him again. And um, sure enough, he was available Friday. And so that Friday, um, Doris and John took us out to Moss Tapas. And I just gotten over the stomach flu. And so I was feeling very skinny and attractive. <laughs> but I made the mistake of eating, you know, dairy and drinking wine. Oh, and then no. we, we hit it off so well, we left there and went to um, the tea bazaar. And I had some caffeine, which I never have. So I was just sick as a dog until like <laughs> 6 in the morning after that. And I held my cell phone all day long. And um, the next day, and he didn't call, and he didn't call. And I had a meeting Sunday after church with um, Des and Des Wes and Danielle Steiner, who were then the youth mm -hmm, ministers. Mm -hmm. um, and I was still clutching my cell phone, and I was worried. And Wes told me, Sarah, don't you know about the 48-hour rule? And apparently a man is not supposed to call a woman until at least 48 hours oh, after their that. date, which I had no idea. I was like, we had such a good time. And 46 hours after our date, Matt called. <laughs> and um, we set it up. And we went on a couple more dates that week. And then pretty soon we were seeing each other every day. And five months later, we, were, we got engaged in a trip to Maine. And um, we were married then in June of 2007. Decided to have it at the church. And unfortunately, we're, we weren't able to invite everyone because um, my parents didn't want to pay for all that food. <laughs> and, and frankly, the church just wouldn't hold everyone. Right. But right. we had a packed church, and a lot of parishioners were able to come after all. And I think you wore this great yeah. hat. I remember I love the pictures from that hat. Uh, but it was just we had a great fun shopping. Good, for good. The your I love the image of hats at a wedding. So I asked, I'd ask people, um, women, to wear hats, and like six or seven did, and it was so fun. Uh, but it was a, it was a crazy hot. It was like 100 degrees, 97 degrees day, and everyone lied to me all day. I'd be like, "Isn't it hot outside?" And my bridesmaids would be like, "No, no, it's not that bad. It's fine." Um, but in the wedding pictures immediately after the wedding. Uh, you see we're all holding at each other at arm's length <laughs> it's so hot nobody wanted to touch each other so it's like I love you so much do not touch me <laughs> um, but then the the weather broke and there was a big thunderstorm and wonderful lightning and the power did not go out at the tent which was great and mm -hmm. the, um, it cooled down like 20 or 20 yeah, degrees yeah. and was really pleasant yeah. but it was just a really joyful it I remember was. bouncing a lot during the ceremony itself because I was just so <laughs> yes. excited and ready yes. to like move on to the vows was, I think it was one of the most joyous weddings yeah. I've ever it been was, to it was great fun so that so Emmanuel's really special to me yeah. for a lot of reasons yeah um has the church changed physically at all in the time that you've been there do you, have there been any updates or anything that you are aware of 
like the um, new furnaces or right. We we definitely have gotten some system. new oh like either AC units or heating things. <laughs> The junior wardens are all going to collectively roll their eyes when they hear this. Some heat or cooling thing, you know, those they, they have gone out pretty regularly, and I think at least one of them had to be replaced. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of work was done in Ledford House after the tenants left. For three years, I'd been telling everyone there was a smell of cat piss in the basement. <laughs> and sure enough, the previous tenants were lovely people, but I hadn't realized that their cats were... Um, using the restroom all up and down the stairway that connects to, oh, to the downstairs part yeah. where we had the youth group. It's pretty hard to get out. Really. Yeah, but they ripped out, they had to rip out the whole carpet and everything, yeah. and so now the um, youth room finally does not smell like cat <laughs> urine. So the kids are more motivated to come. Um, but we, we, a, a new sound system was put in because um, some of the older folks had a hard time hearing my voice because mm -hmm. um, it's a little mm -hmm. bit higher pitched than mm -hmm. Chuck's is. Mm -hmm. And so that was put in, which has been great, and occasionally it blows out. I think it's when one of us gives a powerful sermon, the Holy Spirit just, you know, I think so knocks too. out the whole, I think so the whole too. thing. <laughs> um, so the, you know, some carpet in the pre-K rooms, but there hasn't been anything mm -hmm. massive since I've been here, except the altar being pulled out. Okay. Um, any comments about uh, Chuck as the rector at Emmanuel? It's been great working with him because we have really different styles. Like on the Myers Briggs, I think he's a ENFP, um, and I'm a ENFJ or ESFJ. So we connect enough. Like we're both feeling you people, so we can. It's always easy to resolve conflict because like neither of us wants to hurt anyone else's feelings. So if we're mad at each other, like it resolves pretty quick. Good. good. Um, and we haven't been mad at each other very much because he's very easygoing. Um, mm -hmm. But it's been a great. He's really good at. Um, like leading groups and committees to consensus mm -hmm. uh, and to decision making in a very um, subtle way that's really been impressive to me because I tend to kind of come in like a plow and just with an idea of what I want to get done. Like I'm more interested in an efficient meeting than uh -huh. a, a meeting where everyone feels good afterwards. <laughs> um, and he is more interested in everyone feeling like they fully participated. And so I've learned a lot from that because there's, there's definitely value in efficient meeting and that's not something I've you know, sacrificed, mm -hmm. but it's also really important to make sure everyone feels heard and that they right. can participate. Um, but he's a, he's been a great boss. He doesn't micromanage at all. It's, um, he's very confident in himself. And so he's, he doesn't feel the need to, um, so look over an assistant shoulder. Right. So he's really giving you an opportunity to really grow in the position. Absolutely. I mean, he lets me preach every other week. He lets me celebrate every other week. He completely shares power. When I, when I even first got here, he told people, that, um, you know, when, when I speak, it's him speaking, mm -hmm. and which is amazing. He didn't know me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he promoted me to associate rector probably within six months of me mm -hmm. being there mm -hmm. um, around the time of my ordination of the priesthood, I think. Um, and so that's just been a great gift. I know a lot of people don't have that experience mm -hmm. when they get to a place they are micromanaged or mm -hmm. the boss is threatened by them or whatever. Sure. Yeah. But um, I've had a really... Because in the end, they're only human. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. right. <laughs> um, but so I've... 